Okay, today in Math 20-1, we're going to take a look at Chapter 3. We're going to start by talking about 3.1, Investigating Quadratic Functions in Vertex Form. Well, first of all, in Chapters 3 to 9, there's going to be a lot about quadratic functions and equations. This is going to lay the basis for everything that we do this chapter, so make sure that you totally understand this stuff. If you don't, you are going to struggle immensely as we go through this course. So here we go. First of all, y equals x squared is a quadratic function. It's really be written as f at x equals x squared if it's a function, because y equals x squared is a quadratic equation from the function. So let's look at graphing this. Let's plug in some points for x and see what y is. Well, let's make a chart and start out. If x is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. Plot that point. If x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. 0 is 0, 1 is 1, and when 2 squared is 4. Plotting those points, there's negative 2 positive 4, negative 1 positive 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. Connecting those dots gives us the shape of a parabola. The vertex is the bottom or the top point, the maximum or the minimum of our parabola. The vertex here is called the point PQ. Q is the maximum or the minimum point on the graph. X equals P is the axis of symmetry of our graph. It's going to be symmetrical, but both on a line that goes through the origin. If you flipped it over, it would land on itself. Or if you rotated it 180 degrees, it would land on itself. Y equals A times X minus P squared plus Q is the equation of a quadratic function in vertex form. Where PQ is the vertex, for instance, if the vertex of this parabola is at the point 2, 1, you can see the bottom point is that x is 2, y equals 1, then the equation would be x minus 2 squared plus 1, because p is 2 and q is 1. Let's do an example. Determine the equations of the following quadratic functions, and let's assume, again, like I just did in the last one, that a has a value of 1. Here we go. Let's look at these three. In our first one, if I drew a parabola, here we have the vertex is at 2, 3, so I would give me the equation of y is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 3. In the second graph, here I have a vertex at positive 2, negative 3. That means the equation would be x minus 2 squared minus 3 this time. And in the last one, I have x is going to be at negative 3, so that means that it's going to be y equals x plus 3 squared, and then minus 2. When we look at quadratic functions in the vertex form of y equals a times x minus p squared plus q, we're going to sketch these graphs in vertex form. What you're going to do is generate some ordered pairs and see what's going on. In this one, we're going to look at, first of all, when x is negative 1 is where the vertex is going to be. So we're going to say when x is negative 1, I can plug in a negative 1, and I'm going to get negative 3 for y. So that's one of my points. When x is negative 1, y is negative 3. Now we're going to look at a couple of points on either side of where our vertex is. So when x is 0, we can plug in a 0 there. 0 plus 1 is 0. Squared is, is 1 squared, which is 1, times 2 is 2. Minus 3 gives us a value of negative 1. So that's that point. 
When x is negative 2, y is negative 1. And those are our points. We can draw in the rest of our points and draw in our parabola. Try our second one. This time, we know the vertex is going to be at 4 when x is 4. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to pick the point when x is 4 first. And I'm going to get a 0 times a quarter is a 0, plus 1 is 1. That's my vertex point. It's right there. Now I can pick a couple of points on either side of it when x is 5. When x is 5, 5 minus 4. 5 minus 4 is 1 squared is 1 a quarter. That would give me 3 quarters, or 0.75. So that's what it's going to look like. Let's look at example 2. Determine quadratic functions in vertex form given its graph. Well, this time what we're going to do, in order to figure out the full equation, what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation and identify our points. We have a point PQ, which is our vertex. That tells me that P is 5, Q is negative 4. And we've got another point on here, I can tell by the dot, that XY is 8, negative 1. So X is 8, Y is negative 1. Now we're going to take our equation in vertex form and I'm going to substitute for x, for y, for p, and for q, and I'm going to solve for a. Since y is negative 1, I can say negative 1 is equal to a times x, which is 8 minus 5, p is 5, squared, and that'll be minus 4 for q. Now 8 minus 5 is 3, 3 squared. That's 9. That's going to be 9 times a minus 4 is equal to negative 1 because you have to multiply before you do your subtraction. And add 4 to both sides to get 3 is equal to 9a. Divide both sides by 9 to get a equals 1 third. Now we can say our equation is going to be y is equal to 1 third times x minus 5 squared minus 4, plugging in our p and q. In the second one, here I have p being 0, q being 3, x being 1, and y being 1. I can plug that into my equation again. Well, a is, y is a times x minus p squared plus q. Now when you plug all these in, 1 minus 0 is 1, squared is 1, times a is 1a. So what ends up is 1 is equal to a plus 3. And subtracting 3 from both sides, a will equal negative 2. That means my equation is going to end up y is equal to negative 2 times x minus 0 squared plus 3 and the x minus 0 squared can just simplify to be x squared. So our final answer is negative 2x squared plus 3. You can check both of these by graphing them on your calculator to make sure that they do pot and do fall for those points. Example 3. Let's determine the number of x-intercepts using just a and q. If f at x is equal to 0.8x squared minus 3, I'm going to look at this and say, okay, a is 0.8. That means it's a parabola opening upwards. And my minimum point is going to be at negative 3 because q is negative 3. So if the minimum's at negative 3, that means the vertex has to be below the x-axis. It's opening upwards, so that means it's going to have two x-intercepts. In our second example, f at x is 2 times x minus 1 oops, squared. And our third one is f at x equals negative 3 times x plus 2 squared minus 1. In b, what I notice is that Q is at 0 
because there's nothing behind the x minus 1 squared. And when q is at 0, that means it's only going to just hit the x-axis. And if it just touches the x-axis, that means it's only going to be 1 x-intercept. And it doesn't matter if, if a was positive or negative, it would just touch the x-axis going up or going down. In this case, it opens upwards, so there's a minimum at 0. There's going to be 1 x-intercept. That's what it's going to look like. And C, we have this time A is negative th is going to be a negative 3. That means it opens downward. The maximum now is going to be at negative 1. Therefore, there's going to be 0 x-intercepts. Example 4. Let's determine the number of x-intercepts for each quadratic function without graphing. Same instruction as before. If f at x is negative is, is 0.5x squared minus 7, we have these three. X, a is 0.5, it opens up. Q is negative 7, there's got to be 2. For b, Q is equal to 0 because it has nothing behind the x plus 1 squared. That means there's going to be 1. And in the last case, a is negative. It opens downward. q is negative 11. The maximum's at negative 11, so it means there'll be 0 x-intercepts. Your assignment for this section is page 157, numbers 1 to 11 and 13.